Hi everyone! It's been a while since I've done these Facebook Lives. Uh, it's been a few weeks and uh, actually it, uh, I've been away for a couple of weeks traveling the East Coast doing my tour but it's great to be back and talking to all of you again. And today the topic I chose is about setting yourself free because a lot of people um, write to me and they, the reason they write to me is because they want to know tools. They want to know the how-tos. They want to know what they can learn or how they can learn to do certain things or be a certain way. And they want, they want processes. And, um, and yet, I don't have those to give. And so this is what I want to talk to you about t today. Because when you look at the world through my eyes, you realize that all the tools, the processes, the how-tos, etc., actually burden you and prevent you from being who you truly are. And that's really what I want to talk to you about. Because for those of you who don't know my story, I'm Anita Morjani, and I had end-stage cancer, and uh, I crossed, I basically died. I was in a coma. The doctors said I wasn't going to come back and I crossed over and I realized it wasn't my time when I crossed over. However, while I was there on the other side, one of the things that I learned <clears throat> was that everything that I had been trying to learn and be and do while I was here was more like a burden and who I was was none of those things. In other words, death completely changed the way I view life. And before I died, I was trying to always be better, do better, learn more. Every time there was something wrong with my life, every time I was struggling, I wanted people to give me a process. I wanted people to give me the how-tos. I would research more. I would read all the books. I wanted to be more spiritual. I wanted to learn to be more spiritual. I wanted to meditate more, chant more, pray more. And <clears throat> I was constantly wanting to learn more, absorb more, research more. And when I had cancer, it was the same. I wanted to know, why did I have this? What was I doing wrong? What was I not getting? I was judging myself, beating myself up for not getting the truth. And when I would go to courses and lessons and so on, I would be asking people all the time, um, what are the tools? What are the processes? How can I do this? And then I would follow them to a T. And when I wouldn't get the desired results, I would be judging myself, beating myself up and wondering what had I not gotten? What was I doing wrong? And then I felt the need to research more, do more. When I died, that was when I realized that in actuality, all those things I was doing, being, learning, was just adding layers onto who I really was. It was actually burdening me and making me more of who I am not. And I hope I'm making sense, but I think it will as, I, as, as you hear me out. <clears throat> so for me, I realized that my soul had always wanted to be free and death was like a giant let go from everything that I was conditioned to believe. I realized that my soul's biggest need was freedom. My soul wanted to soar and be whatever I wanted to be whenever I wanted to be it. That was really what I had been denying my soul. And it's really because of our past conditioning that we do this. I use the analogy of Michelangelo to really express what I'm trying to get at here. And I've used this before, many of you heard me say it, but for those who haven't, um, you know Michelangelo as the artist or as the sculptor who used to create these beautiful statues of angels from a block of stone or a block of marble. And when people would ask him, how do you create such beautiful statues of angel, of, of these angels? How do you know where to chip and what to, um, what to cut away or how to chisel his face? And Michelangelo said, the angel is already there. All I do is chip away at what is not part of the angel and I set the angel free. Now that 
quote has always struck me, especially after my near-death experience, because I realized that that's what happened when I had the NDE. What happened was my soul was set free. And that's when my soul truly knew who it was. It knew that it had nothing to be or do or learn. It just had to be itself. It had to be set free to be itself. And so basically the idea is to let go of what is not you so that your soul can be who it was meant to be. It's about chipping away and dying to who is not you. So when I came back into my body, my view of the world has changed completely, like completely. I see the world very differently. So, so nowadays, for example, when, uh, when I write books and when I get invited to speak at events, I think I, I drive people crazy. I drive the promoters and publishers and all crazy because they always want to know that when you, uh, they always want to know in order to promote the event or the book or whatever, they say, what are the tools you're giving people? What are the how to's? What are the to do's? What will the audience get? And I always say nothing absolutely nothing. I have nothing to give you. I have no more processes to give you. It's the opposite. You don't get those from me. You don't get processes and tools. I'm reminding you of the opposite. I'm reminding you to let go of all those things. So in other words, um, I would ask you, what have you taken on that is not you? What have you said yes to that you wished you had said no to? What relationships are you involved in that you wish you weren't? Um, who would you be if you weren't afraid? Um, what would you be doing if you weren't afraid? Things like that. Those are the kinds of questions I would ask you so that you can start to chip away at what is not you. More questions that I can come up with are um, what if um, what if a mental crisis is actually a spiritual crisis of losing yourself? For example, um, we are very quick to label um, people going through a mental crisis as having a mental crisis or a breakdown. And so what we do is we tend to we, we tend to drug them. That's what our culture does. That's what our society does, is that we tend to drug people um, so that they can be subdued and then we put them through, um, we, we put them through therapy. Now, I, I believe in therapy. It does help a lot of people. Um, many people, in fact, I totally believe in therapy and I'm all for it. However, what I would love to see introduced in therapy is the understanding that perhaps what the person is going through is a spiritual crisis and not a mental crisis. And what do I call a spiritual crisis? A spiritual crisis could be you losing yourself, your soul, your identity, losing who you are. It could be caused because you've been living a life that's not your life in trying to meet everybody else's expectations and you've lost the purpose of your soul. So we have to start looking at things like this because we live in a world that conditions us that we have to do more, be more, um, we, have to, um, we, we have to earn more, we have to accumulate more. We really live in a world of competition where especially today in the world of social media where everybody lives in a fishbowl and you're all comparing yourselves to everyone else and your, you, what you use as your measure, you use what everybody else is doing and being as your measure of how you should be. In actuality, your only measure is your own soul. It's the longing of your own soul. What did your soul come here to be and do? And, um, and to me, the biggest value I learned on the other side is that the only way the soul can find its purpose, in other words, the only way that you can find your purpose is by allowing yourself to be free. And that is free from the things that you are not free from the burdens you have taken on which are not yours, free from the dramas that are not yours but you have chosen to buy into and take on. Another thing that prevents you from being who you are is particularly if you are an empath 
but you don't realize it or you don't understand it. An empath is basically somebody whose sixth sense, for want of a better word, um, is so strong that it is as strong, if not stronger, as our other five senses. So in other words, you are a six sensory being, but you are living in a world that only recognizes five senses. You're living in a world that has been created by five sensory beings for five sensory beings, but you are actually somebody who has a very strong sixth sense and it is being denied in this world. So that is another reason for crisis and for losing yourself, um, which needs to be recognized and which needs to be released. Um, and of course, even though I say that the most important thing is to set your soul free, it, the whole idea is about being who you are as opposed to being who you are not. A question that comes up that many people ask is, if it's all very well to say that um, let's let's release all the dramas, let's let go of the relationships that, that feel like a burden, that are not ours, that we've taken on. But what about responsibility? What about the relationships that are our responsibility? That's absolutely true. There are some that are a responsibility. For example, if we have children, we do have to take on the responsibility of the children if we've given birth to children. Some children are special needs and they need our help for longer than many than others. And also some of us may have aging parents that we feel responsible or we feel we want to help. So the thing about responsibility, I absolutely agree that we need to take on our responsibility, but it's a lot easier to take on responsibility from a place of freedom where we choose to take on certain responsibilities. And I know that I've chosen to take on certain responsibilities um, in, in my family and in my circle because uh, I do have, both Danny and I do have aging parents who we care for and love. And I know that if I had children, I would take on that responsibility. But there are so many other areas in our lives where we realize that we've taken on things that we didn't need to and we took them on for the wrong reasons. For example, the reasons why you say yes instead of no are possibly because of your conditioning, because of misplaced guilt, because of misplaced obligation. Those are the things we start to need to let go of and we start to need to chip away at those to allow ourselves to be who we are. Once you chip away at that and you allow yourself to be who you are, you realize that you don't need the processes and the how-tos and the tenets. You don't need to be told this is the formula because your soul will be free to find its own way. Um, another, uh, another reason people give me for not being able to chip away at who they are not, is they say they're tied to a job that pays their bills. So money is a reason. But here's the thing, there's a myth around money where you've been conditioned, um, it, to be honest, you've been conditioned in a really messed up way about money. And it either keeps you poor or it makes you greedy out of fear of not having enough. And you get yourself in a bind with mortgages and debts because you're stuck in a job that you don't like for a lot of people. Or <clears throat> you're stuck in poverty and so you're stuck constantly worrying about your next dollar or your next payment or your next, your next paycheck. So the thing that I want to tell you about money is that um, your soul doesn't want to be in that situation, but you've been conditioned from the time you were young. Even in your education system, you've been conditioned that you have to find a job, you have to get work, you have to earn money, you have to pay the bills, you have mortgages. You've been conditioned to do all that. And then when you watch social media and you see the house or the car that your neighbor has or your friend has, you want the same one, even if you have to go into debt. Here's the thing, freedom doesn't cost that much money. In fact, the reason you need as much money you do is because you are caught in living a life that is not yours. And that's the case for a lot of people. I know some of you are going to say that, no, it's I'm caught in poverty. I can't climb out of poverty. The thing is, it's because 
The values that you have been taught are not your own values. Had you been taught that your soul wants to find its purpose from the beginning, that is the path you would have chosen from the beginning. Because all you need is to earn enough money to bring you the freedom that you desire. You see, um, the way I look at money, because when you have freedom, when you truly chip away at what is not yours, and when you allow your soul to seek the freedom that it truly desires, what you start to see, this is what I discovered, and this is what it looks like through my eyes, you start to realize that nothing in this world is truly yours, nothing, not even your children, not even your parents. So they stop feeling like a burden, even when you take on the responsibility to be there for them. They are not yours. They don't belong to you, and neither does the burden belong to you but it doesn't mean you're not there for them. You're there for them because you love them, which is something you discover when you set your soul free. But even the money in this world is neither yours. Even the money in your bank is not yours, but all of it is there for you to have access to. You have, <clears throat> you have access to an unlimited amount of money but none of it is yours, but it's available for you if you are following your soul's purpose. That's what it feels like to look at life through my eyes. As you follow your soul's purpose and you allow yourself to be who you are and you chip away at who you are not, what is truly yours comes to you, including the opportunities, including the challenges. It doesn't mean you live a challenge-free life. You do attract challenges, but the challenges are truly yours and they feel different. They don't feel like the kind of challenges that, that give you a breakdown or that um, where you get a mental or emotional breakdown. The challenges where you get a mental breakdown are the ones that you attract because you, that come from you not being you. It comes from you taking on a life that's not yours. But when you've chosen to chip away at what's not you, and you take on a life that truly is yours, the challenges that you attract are your challenges and you work through them and they make you stronger. And you also attract the amount of money and financial freedom and other freedoms that you need to follow your actual purpose. And you can feel it because it feels really different. Um, and, and so if you are going through a challenge, if you're going through an illness, the first thing I would ask you to do is to start to die to who you are not. Start to let go to who you are not and start letting go of all the conditions that you have accumulated over this lifetime. I hope you found this helpful. And in the meantime, what I would like to do is I would like to ask you for your questions. I'm going to ask Danny to read out your questions. I'm going to ask him if he has any, but post them starting now, or if you've already started posting, posting questions, that's really great. Danny's going to read them out. Um, go ahead if you've got some. I have one question here. It's from uh, Monica Soul. A couple of other people have already tried to answer, but I think it would be good if uh, you also um, provided an answer. Monica asks, Anita, why is it that so many people disappear from your life when you go through cancer? I went through cancer two years ago and have never felt more alone in my life. Oh. This hurts so much and I can't find a good reason for why it's like this. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry to hear that, Monica. I'm going to tell you what, you know, sometimes when people ask me questions, um, I get a hit of what the answer is, a download, and I am so sorry you're going through this. If you were here in front of me, I would give you a hug. I'm going to invite you into a Facebook group where there are some beautiful healers in there that are going to help you. Um, um, I'm going to ask one of my team, Rita Pape, to swoop you up and take you into that Facebook group. So I'm going to call out to Rita. But anyway, the hit I'm getting, and I'm going to tell you this, and I want to say this in the gentlest way, 
My sense is that you have been giving and giving of yourself, so much so that it has drained you and caused you cancer. Because you have been so giving, you have been so generous, and you have been so almost like a doormat, and I say this with the utmost respect because that's what I was, um, everybody you attracted in your life just wanted to take from you. So many of the people, I don't want to say everybody, but a lot of the people you attracted in your life were only there because of what they could get from you. Not all people in the world are like that, but you attracted a lot of those people because you were so giving. Finally, you have got so drained that your body is crying out trying to tell you, Monica, stop giving. It's time for you to receive. This is your body's uh, calling out to you saying, please, Monica, it's time for you to receive. It's time for you to take care of yourself. It's time for you to look after yourself and stop putting yourself last. Stop giving to everyone except you. And this is something that empaths, people pleasers, caregivers have a tendency to do. And we become doormats and we forget about ourselves and we give to everyone else. So now you are at a place that you're unable to give and you need to receive. All those people who'd only come to you because they wanted something from you, they've all disappeared. That's the reason that comes to me um, and I have to share what comes to me. And, I'm, and the next thing, again, I say with the utmost respect, you're better off without them, especially right now, because they're only around you because they want from you. They're not there to help you through this. Now it's try time for you to attract another set of people who are going to love you for who, who you are. And your work is to discover who you are. That is your wake up call. It's to discover who you really are and allow yourself to be who you are and to flourish, to really flourish as the moniker that your soul came here to be. I really hope that's helpful for you. I've done a lot of videos for people who are going through cancer. Please start letting go of everything that's not you. Please chip away at who you are not. So thank you for that beautiful, deep, heartfelt question. And I think that your question probably helped a lot of people. So I really appreciate that. Um, do we have any more questions? I have another question here from Heather Elizabeth, who asks, how do you know if you were living the right life? How will you know? Okay, that's a great question. It feels very freeing. So with every decision we make, I often say the simple way is, is it coming from a place of love or is it coming from a place of fear? For me, love is the same thing as freedom, passion, joy. So when you're living the right life, it doesn't run you down or wear you down. When you feel tired, it's a good kind of tired. It's not a stress kind of tired. It's not a dread of to waking up tomorrow. In the morning, even if you need to sleep in, um, you're doing it because you're, do you're doing it to recharge your batteries. It's not because you dread the day. I always look forward for what the day brings me. I didn't used to. Years ago, when I used to go to work in a job, I would look forward to Fridays and I used to dread Monday mornings. That's not my life anymore. I love every single day. I usually forget what day of the week it is because I do what I love every day. I love where I am in my life. <clears throat> I love the work I do. I have a passion for speaking to people about, particularly my favorite subjects, are speaking about being an empath, speaking about illnesses, dealing with cancer. I just love talking about these subjects because um, I, I have a very different belief about them than most other people. Um, and I'm just gonna touch on cancer for a moment, in a moment again, but, um, you can tell because it feels freeing. So this is again why I don't give people tenets and rules and processes and how-tos because those things can feel binding. 
they can feel um, the, the opposite of liberating. You are living your life when you feel free and liberated. You're in the perfect relationship when your relationship feels freeing, not binding, not constricting, not restraining. When your spouse or partner wants for you what you want for yourself. When they are happy for you when you're thriving and doing well, not resentful or jealous or fearful. Um, that those are the perfect situations. When you're following your life's long longing, when you're following your calling and you feel this is what you were put on the planet to do, that's when you know that it's, uh, it's the right thing. I just want to touch on cancer again. And I find that I do like talking about it. And also this is for Monica who had the previous question, but I do not see cancer the way the medical paradigm that we have created in this world, the way they view cancer. I don't see cancer that way. Um, I don't see it as a physical illness. Um, I know that people don't always agree with that, especially those who are entrenched in the medical paradigm. Um, I actually see it as our body's way of telling us that there is something going on with us at an emotional or energetic level. That's how I see it. And I feel that the medical paradigm has caused us to, to focus on it purely from the physical and to fear it and to treat it as something alien that's happening to us. And it has caused us to feel that we, are, that we are victims of it and we have to fight it as a battle and try and get rid of it at, at all costs. I don't see it that way at all. Um, I don't even believe that we should fear the word cancer anymore. I, I believe we need to take that negative charge out of it. Um, and please watch some of my videos where I speak about how I was when I even when I was dealing with lymphoma, I was in a community for six months that did not even use the word cancer. And my lymphoma just shrank dramatically because the fear of cancer was gone. And that is what I am uh, uh, looking for is um, the removal of the fear from the word cancer. That's what I'm looking for. Either the removal of the word, but if we can't remove the word, then the removal of the fear of the word or the term or the idea of cancer. Um, so anyway, I've spoken more about that in other videos. Please check them out. And um, let's take another question and then I want to share with you a little idea that I have. Yes. The next question <coughs> is from Cheryl Stasi, who says, Anita, any suggestions on how to help my autistic daughter who doesn't love herself at all? So uh, that's a great question. And so again, I'm going to tell you what comes to me. Um, Cheryl, I don't know you and I'm going to say this with, utter, uh, with, with total respect. Um, I, if you were in front of me, I would ask you, do you love yourself? Because my sense is that your autistic daughter is picking up on energies around her. When we have special needs children who don't communicate and learn in the same way we do and who don't interact in the world the same way we do, chances are that their senses are highly attuned. They are far more sensitive to the energies around us than we are or than we perceive them to be. And so the way for your daughter to love herself is for you to practice self-love and she will learn from through metamorphosis, actually, through absorbing it from you. So this is really something for you and not for her. Um, so if you stop worrying and stressing about her and start taking care of yourself and loving yourself, uh, and hugging yourself. And if you were here, I would give you a big hug, sending you a big virtual hug right now. Your daughter will pick up on that and she will love herself. I assure you this actually works. And this is the case for everyone with young children. If you get stressed out about your children, um, especially little ones, toddlers, babies, if you're feeling stressed out, if you're getting angry, if you're getting impatient, it's not about what you say to them, um, it, they're going to absorb that. So stop being so strict with your children because that stress, that strictness, that's what they're going to absorb, not the discipline that you're trying to teach them. Um, 
So thanks for listening to all that. Now in some of my other videos and at my events, I often talk about um, building my own retreats and so on. And, uh, and I have actually expressed though, that building a retreat, and I've talked about healing retreats where people are healing or have the, um, how would I say, it? where we can speak about healing in a different way, differently from what it's, how it's done in the medical paradigm, where we can speak about why you're going through the illness you're going through. So I have spoken about that in my retreats. I've spoken about it in my other videos. I've spoken about building certain retreats. But when I talk about building these retreats, we are, um, oh, just a moment, Danny is um, signaling me. Every now and then I seem to look away from the camera. I apologize for that because every now and then I see Danny kind of either doing a thumbs up or a thumbs down or signaling me with something. And right now he's sending me a note which says Facebook is having issues with video and audio in some countries. So I want to say here that if you watch it back, I think you will be fine. So if you are having video and audio issues, and I believe some people are fine, some are having issues. If you're having issues, play it back later and it should be fine. Um, so I often talk about having retreats where we can go deeper into what I speak about, where we can speak without fear of um, naysayers, of debunkers, of people who are totally immersed in the medical paradigm, who are immersed in the five sensory three-dimensional world, who like to believe that what we're saying is not true. Whereas there is a fair percentage of you that relate to it and want to be able to discuss it in a safe arena and go deeper. So what I actually want to create in the interim since it's a lot harder to build a brick and mortar retreat with administrators, I am planning to create an online platform and I would like to hear your opinions and thoughts about it. And, and um, an online platform would actually cost us money to build because we would have to hire people to build it, to take care of it, to maintain it, to offer, um, to, to administer it. And so there would be a membership. We would try to keep the membership fee as low as possible, but there would have to be a monthly membership. Um, and so it would be inexpensive, but there would be running costs for us. So in this platform, we would be able to have deeper discussions in a safer arena and we would be able to get deeper into helping people who are dealing with illnesses such as cancers and so on. We would be able to, I would be able to get on live and do videos. And so although the, all of this will cost us money, it will be a lot cheaper and a lot less and could happen a lot sooner than a brick and mortar venue. At a brick and mortar venue, people would have to come and there would have to be accommodation. Um, so I'm thinking of an online platform where I could even do live events and so on. It would bring down the costs drastically of brick and mortar events, brick and mortar um, sanctuaries and healing sanctuaries and so on. So uh, I would love to hear your opinion on it. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to know that if I if I did create such a platform, how many of you would seriously be interested in joining? And remember, it would include things like um, um, a live webinar where I would actually take your questions in real time um, and it would include other things like um, discussion forums, safe areas, um, coaching, a lot of other things that we can do, but in a safe arena. So, um, so that's all I have for you now. I am getting on the cruise next week. Really excited about it. Really excited that it's sold out. So I'm afraid I can't even tell you that if anyone is interested, please join me. The next event, I think, I, the next few events I have, I would love to see you. Um, I have an Omega event coming up, which is focused on 
healing the physical body, but we go, th we go at it from the inside out, not the outside in. Uh, so please join me. That's in October. I do have many other events. I have a Celebrate Your Life event in Sedona. I have another event with Greg Braden at, uh, in New Mexico. So check out my schedule. Would love to see you at live events. Would love to get a hug from you. Um, I will not be doing a live next week, but I will be pushing out a really interesting interesting video uh, which I conducted with my previous doctor, my general practitioner from Hong Kong, Dr. Brian Walker. We're going to be featuring that this week. And in the meantime, I uh, have a great week and I look forward to seeing you all soon. And for those of you coming to my events, look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.